This is the Copper Crab Podcast. I'm Cherry Crab. I'm Naveen Copper Weiss. Woo! Shout out to our sponsors, Direct Sound Headphones and Moon Juice CBD by Jay Rabbit. Oh yeah. So what's the deal with that? Do they get they get a permanent shout out for all time for giving us two pairs of headphones? Four. Oh, four pairs, that's right. Two, not so much, but once you hit the four barrier. <laughs> we might need to renegotiate the deal. <laughs> Listen, we've been saying your name a lot. We need some more headphones. All right, all right. Hey, Chaney, check your mic real quick. Check, check. I think it's a little uh, low. It's a little low. Yeah, you know what? I oh, think that's an interesting taste. I think it's because I have beer. your mic. I think I have me plugged into your channel and you plugged into my channel. Well, I always listen back to these episodes and I'm like, Naveen has me turned up so loud. Yeah, you do sound loud on a lot of the episodes. Yeah, so, so maybe we turn me down a little bit. There we go. All right, we'll just roll with it. Hopefully that works. It's not like we're not going to start the episode over or anything like that. Because <laughs> no, it's we live. Have, we would never do that. Um, Damn, Cheney, this feels crazy, dude. This is like old school. I know. I wanted to say before we get too far into the episode that if you guys want a t-shirt, I'm going to put the link in the description. You should go pick one up. And we also just put out a new Entheos merch line that includes two really sick shirts, a black and a gray shirt, and then a really sick long sleeve. There's the, uh, there's the Copper Crab merch. I'm pl- I'm, I've got my web browser on the uh, oh nice nice thing now yeah <laughs> <laughs> trying to be somewhat pro so copper crab merch by that I send all of that and then we have the night shift entheos merch that I do not send to any of that even right. though people hit me up all the time well we made it kind of a thing merch. like oh we send our own merch well so because I used to send all of our merch honestly but it just uh, be, it I I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. It became like a f- a full time job. That it does. That it and does. I I was oh, appreciative for all of it, but you know it it just becomes like something that that's so time consuming. So I'd rather. Yeah, I mean, when you're doing like you know, it was probably 100 just a hundred grand in merch job. a month, like we are. You yeah. know, it's hard to keep well, up. One with. to two fifty. <laughs> Honestly, we do between one and two fifty hundred grand. Wow. Yeah, that's a so lot of we're merch. really just banking on merch. And, you know, when, when we have yeah. that many things to send out every month, it gets like I, I would just do it around the clock. And I'm still shipping out orders from way back then. It's like an Amazon warehouse here, but only Cheney works in the warehouse. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty gnarly. Slave labor. Hold on. We're doing, if you are doing your coffee crab um, bingo right now, you're getting some points checked off. What are you doing? I'm making sure that everything works. You should, don't you think we should have like a section before the the episode where we do that? I think you just like to do that. It's you just like think it's <laughs> funny to do, don't you? You just think it's funny because, and then we, we can talk about it on the podcast. Well, I don't think so. I don't think that's what. Uh, we're doing I think at all. that's what you're doing, doing for sure. Well, I'm, I'm making sure that the levels are straight and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess you know something that we used to do when it was just m- me and you, right? Yeah, we used to do that a lot more. I, we had, like, what, 40 episodes, just me and you? Something like that? What would you say? Something like that, yeah. We've done a lot of episodes just by ourselves. Yeah, but what we would do is we would talk about, like, if we were having a beer or a drink. So. Oh, yeah, I remember for old, that. For old, maybe we'll old, do a little old cheers. Old time's sake. What are you drinking, Chaney? I'm drinking, honestly, this is, uh, it's interesting. I'm drinking a lavender IPA. Who is it by? I have no idea who it's by. I don't know if well, it's, it's quite a, my thing, honestly. a girl there's on there with a bunch of flowers. It's There's no haze to it. It's not quite my thing. It's a little too uh, golden. Can I taste it? Without haze, yeah. I was going to get some mint from our garden and put it in there, oh. and you said that that wouldn't taste very good. But doesn't I, taste like beer. I now think it would taste good. This yeah, does, it's This an doesn't IPA. taste like beer, but my... Really? Yeah, it's an IPA. It doesn't fit the description very it's well. The thing, the problem with lavender food is that it just tastes like soap to me. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah. I'm not huge on floral flavors, so I don't really know why I got that. Yeah. It's questionable. It's not Honestly, good. because the, pl- the store that we were at had a lot of hazies as well. Oh, they had a, a million. That's So, uh, yeah, that was a, a poor choice, honestly. I think if anyone, if you like lavender as a food, I personally prefer it as a bar of soap. 
I agree. That tastes like beer with a lavender bar of soap that has fallen into the beer. And been in there for like yeah, a month. In my opinion. But yeah. I also did something. I got something completely out of character. Um, this is Tart You Glad. Discretion <laughs> Brewery. Tart Dark. Discretion is good. Discretion's a good brewery. Yeah, so hold on. Check this out. This is Tart Dark Ale with raspberries. This is probably the last thing I would get. Yeah, let but me try it. For some reason, when I, we were at Staff of Life, I was like, I don't know why, but I'm going to try it. Uh, that's No. You don't like it? It's way too... There was a time in my life where I would have drank that because it's a sour. It's like a dark sour. It's but completely something now. that I wouldn't get, and it ta- I love it. It's really good. Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't drink that. But we also have... Let's talk about so these other beverages here, Jenny. Or you don't want to have beverage talk? No, I'm, I'm over the beverage talk. We got a lot of good about beverage what we're drinking. around here. Look at all these. Look at this. We got a Brussels white beer. Also really good. I, d- I took two sips of one of these the other night and just directly fell asleep. True. I don't know if you remember that. That's but. true. Okay, anyway, we can get to the actual show here. I'm kind of just excited that, <laughs> Now that like, we've described everything we're drinking. I have water. <laughs> I also have a bottle, a nice bottle of Crystal Geyser. There we go. We've got um, a lot of good stuff happening here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drink, I think I'm just excited that we don't have to, like, entertain someone. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it's like having someone o- over at your house. It's really fun. Yeah. And it's good while it lasts, but there are some nights that you'd rather just kind of hang out by yourself. Yeah, like when, when we started the show just now, I was like, I'm just going to start it. Like, whatever. I don't have to like... It felt really rushed, but it it, it was. was because I'm so used to... It was rushed because nothing there was There being working. another person here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's like we could just kind of do whatever, you know? It doesn't even matter, really. Because I don't have to... There's not like any awkwardness. Does that make sense? Yeah. The yeah. world is our oyster. Yeah, like, well, I don't know. We could talk about anything. Anything. We, we can talk about anything. Yeah, we don't have to have interview questions. Not that we don't like having the guests. This isn't like... No, it's good to have guests, but we have been having a lot of guests lately. A lot of good guests. A lot of great and guests. And if you haven't, which I'm assuming you have checked out those episodes, you should go through and check them out. And we yeah. have a lot of good guests coming up. We do. But... That we do. Oh, well, that's the reason why we're doing this episode with yeah, no guests. I'm doing something now because I handle a lot of the scheduling for the podcast. Thus, I handle it all. Let's just say that. Most of it. Most well, I'm of the it. Behind, Sometimes I'm the technical you do guy. things. I'm the yeah, technical you're the guy. technical guy. But now I'm like scheduling a week every <laughs> so many guests for us to have just an episode, the two of us. Because, you know, we could... We uh, There are a lot of people who... Um, uh, we've reached out to or have reached out to us and have been interested in doing the show. So we have a lot of cool stuff coming up and we've been able to have a lot of cool guests so far. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's necessary to like have a week when it's just the two of us so we can kind of like re just get together and refocus. Set, uh, re- yeah, re- Re- reset. Reset. Talk about, you know, stuff that's going on in our camp. Yeah. Because it, camp. Because that is something that you don't do as much of when you have a guest on the podcast. Yeah, I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, well, hey, by the way, um, you know, we are getting ready to make an album, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> well, we actually are making an album. We, we're way, the album is made. Let's put it that way. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, it's written. Is it not? Yeah, it's written, but it's not made. The album is not made. Okay. It's not done. No. It's not done with. The album it's is written, for sure. It's in very exciting exciting stages though. it is i would say it is we've got a lot is going on with it um depending on how much of this i'm privy to say we've okay, got i would not <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm the loud mouth i want to just you know say everything from the rooftops yeah i'm not certain that everything should be like secretive but i would rather you know, wait a little longer to say who's playing on the album. Okay, we don't need to say who's playing on it. But because there's someone playing bass on the album. And the bass sounds insane. It's incredible. BTW. <coughs> Literally incredible. Yeah, really happy with uh, the, way that, the way that's turned out. I just, like, it's been blowing my mind how good it is. Yeah, we've, we're have super stoked on that. If you follow the bass player on the internet, you might know that's true. who it is. That's true. The The tone... 
The bass tone is just like uh, incredible. It's it's really some of that tone. neural DSP shit. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> that tone is killing. But it's so good. Yeah, and uh, you've you've started tracking uh, guitars as well. Yeah, and that's really exciting because tracking guitars you never really think of it in the demo stages because demo guitars exist, but tracking guitars <gasps> changes a lot in the yeah. recording process. Because I was thinking, oh, these demo guitars are pretty sick, you know, like, fuck, I don't know, I don't, should I redo it all? You know, obviously I was going to, but mm-hmm. getting that new guitar from Ibanez. I don't know if that's obvious. Yeah, it's not. It's You not. would, you've um, said multiple times that you would, like, is something happening with my mic? Like, it sounds like it's cutting I in I think and it's out. the noise gate. Yeah, it's the, it definitely is. Okay, let me see if I can fix that, but you, you, you can keep talking. But I mean, I'm sure that you would uh, keep demo guitars, you've said multiple times that you would. I wouldn't be down for that, but. Whoa! Strength here. I'm going to put you up to soft voice. Try that. Right <coughs> now. I think I think I have kind of a soft voice. I know. I mean, here, let's, I'll just, oh, I'll just level you up a little bit. There we go. Boom, boom. Try it now. Check, check. Check, check. One, two. Okay, I turned you down to soft. Tone. Yeah, that, noi- that noise gate was canceled. Like, I think I speak too softly sometimes, and it was only a, it was cutting me off at a okay. low tone. Well, I think now. Cool. Yep. Uh, what were we talking about? I don't know. Should we start the podcast? No, over? definitely not. Oh, okay. this is, I like the way things are <laughs> running. It's got a good okay. vibe to it. Yeah, I'm not mad at it either. We were talking about tracking, though. So uh, we're, you're in the middle of tracking guitars. Vocals are going to be going to be tracked after guitars. Yeah. Bass is almost done. Drums are done. That's right. Uh, We'll probably do some electric. Tronics. I don't know if we'll do, but some like background. Uh, yeah, ambient. We're going for vibes. more of guitar-based ambience, and instead of doing a lot of synth shit like I've done on other albums, doing more of this this you know synth layers with guitar. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Because yeah, I don't really know why, but that's just what I'm feeling. That's what we did on um, our last single. There's Dust. not actually any synth. There's just a bunch of like, you know, kind of guitar layers in the background. But since I got that new guitar from Ibanez and I've been tracking guitars a bunch, it sounds so much heavier with real tracked guitar compared to the demo. It's It really crazy. does. It so, also just sounds cleaner. Yeah. You know, obviously not to mention when you're tracking for an actual album, you know, you're going to sit there and if you're if you're crazed lunatic like me you know get it lo- get it right yeah for sure mm-hmm. so it's going pretty well i think we actually have some questions about the album we do we we're gonna answer but some speaking questions. of synths i wanted to talk about that a little bit i feel like we will add some analog synth parts but that's going to be i think a last thing yeah. because i don't want to overcrowd i feel like we've been in the past there are moments not all the time but i feel like we have at points overcrowded the music so i think that we should record vocals and then like go back through and and do yep. a lot of the layers so a lot of those like n- not just the riff or the solo or the bass or drums a lot of the added layers will be the last thing that we add yeah I, that we I work agree. on but uh, our art won't be done until uh late summer yeah. so we're getting someone that we really wanted to do art to do it yeah so he's available in you know, summer. So, but we're not even tripping. I mean, what's the, at first we were like, "What? We need to get this album done now." And then, you know, then when you think about it more, and you think about how much preparation stuff we could do in the meantime, like have all the tab books done, have some playthroughs ready to go, have some music videos, yeah, on and have deck, it all, and you know, and instead of having it like, "All right, get the album out," and then trying to catch up with all this extra stuff. Yeah, right. and to have it all be cohesive. That's something that I really, really, ha- has been really super important to me in this record is that everything is cohesive from the art to the just the entire layout of the album, the music videos, the playthroughs. Obviously, the music is the first thing that starts to bring those things together. But I just want it all to be cohesive and all to, I, I just want to have time to work on it all have it all be super well thought out. And I feel like to this point, 
Because we've been working on this album at this point for probably a year and a half. Two years. I think you started writing it over two years ago. Yeah, I mean, if you conclude that, the first song that I wrote was right after the last tour that we did. Yeah. So, so that was, you know, however long ago. We've been working. Uh, granted, we did work on a few things in the meantime, and there was a good amount of time last year when there we weren't really working on music. That's true. That's but true. <clears throat> we've been working on the album for a long time. We want it to be very well thought out. I'm so far just like really astounded by it personally. I think it's the coolest thing we've ever done. And I know that's really cliche to say, but I'm just really 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 proud of it we've demoed some vocals for it and it's been it's just by far the most dynamic thing that we've done as a as a group as a unit yeah and i don't know i'm really excited about it but i w when it comes out i want it to be done as well both artistically and and cinematography wise all of these ways i want yeah. it to all come together and be well executed. I don't want anything to be like a um I think what you're, just what you're, quickly yeah. put together. Like you're not even about talking it. about the album itself. You're talking about everything that surrounds it. Like yeah, want exactly. Every single thing that's to do with the release to be done and cohesive like its own and planned out universe, yeah. I guess you could say. Exactly. Which is something that we haven't really done before. Yeah. 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 I mean we have to an extent, but we've never been like Okay, before this album out, what do we want to convey with the music video? Right. Right. Or, you know, like I said before, having the tab books done, having, uh, just having everything good to go. And yeah. I think it's more important to do that than try to rush it and get it out because it doesn't matter anyway. Exactly. You know? Not that many people are, are sitting there like about to die unless an Entheos album comes out. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, none are. Yeah. No <laughs> people will die. And... <laughs> No matter when it comes out, which I'm assuming, I'm guessing early next year that it will come out. Just a shot in the dark. Yeah. But whenever it comes out, I'm stoked and I'm excited to share it. And I think that it will be something worth, it'll, it'll just be worth it it's in the long run. Uh, I agree. I agree. And to, to keep saying the same thing over again, I think with the previous releases that we've done, we're looking at everything that we've done and saying, okay, what do we like about this? What do we not like about it? Yeah. You know, what did we rush? Mm -hmm. what, uh, what did, what needs to be focused in on this time around? And it's really the first time. It's kind of the first time I've ever really done that. Me, Just me uh, personally, to be honest with you. There are aspects I've done it on before, but there are, parts of that i never really had thought out in the same way yeah, i mean not just with this band but with every band that I've yeah been. Like i've been there's always been a sort of rush something has been rushed totally in a way well i mean you have to imagine at the beginning of entheos we put out an ep in 2015 then we put out a full length in 2016 and then we put another full length out in 2017 yeah so at this point it's 2021 four years since we've put out our last album and then we put out a single last year of course but you know putting out the single was we intended on putting that out because there was a tour coming up i don't know if we would have put it out without the tour that's but, right that's right but, wow i forgot about that i forgot about that but yeah, yeah so yeah we kind of just were we, like, we okay, were rushing yeah. things at the beginning yeah. and it's not like anyone's fault or anything bad i just think we were trying to write really quickly at the beginning because that's you know I don't know. That's yeah. what we were doing. And now it's it's just something that's way more way more time has been spent on. Yeah, and I mean the writing is definitely the easy part for me. Like this album is done plus there's probably, I don't know, if you went through my computer, there's like five or six songs just floating around on there. Maybe yeah. even more. Yeah, for sure. It's the rest of the stuff. Yeah, it's turning it into s turning the songs into an album and turning that album into a whole a universe, a universe it, within I like itself. I got, I got that because you talk about the Marvel universe, yeah, I all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, the u that's cool. I want to use that. Yeah, you know, have our own universe. It's the EU, the Entheos universe. Oh shit, I like that, dude. Yeah, so I, I'm really excited, and that we have a lot of exciting things going on with the album too, and I'm sure that we'll, uh, you allude know, start to it a lot. Allude, yeah, we will allude. vaguely speak about it. 
I mean, there's some good stuff going on over here. There dude. really I'm is. I'm not going to lie. There really is. You know? You know what I'm saying? Chaney, you feel you feel where I'm coming from? Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> Honestly, we should be cheersing. I Just agree to that, dude. We haven't, I agree to we that. We haven't cheers since our... Since something exciting happened, something pretty big happened the other day. <laughs> well, what, are, are we, we're really going to do that? Just, yeah. just allude. Yeah. Just, well, okay. you guys will know soon. We're excited. All that I will say is we're very excited about the next album. We have some very cool things going on surrounding it, and yeah, we're excited. And it looks like touring might be picking up again soon. So I'm assuming, if all goes well, we hope to be back on the road beginning of next year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it seems we'll see. We've got some insider info that tours might be happening again pretty soon. <laughs> As in, like uh, the announced t- the tours that have been announced. I don't know. I don't know. Man. We might have an insider tip. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so let's get to these questions. Damn, twenty minutes. We spent a good fifteen of that talking about these beers. Yeah, I'd like to just talk about beer more personally, but <coughs> maybe I'll. <laughs> Uh, answer the question in the form of beer. Smart. Like Jeopardy. Okay, let's try to do that. That'll be a game. Okay, the game is to try to tie beer into the question. Okay. That's going to be fucking hard to do, man. I don't know if I should have said that. First question. All right, we're tying beer into this. So we took some, we took questions on a good old Instagram and we also had uh, some from emails. So... So let's get down to it. You let's know what? I haven't it. usually I pre read the questions working. and I write, you know, really long essay, heartfelt uh answers. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> but with these uh, I'm not gonna you lie, I haven't I haven't even read the questions. So you're really getting an off the cuff answer right now. Just straight from the heart. Yeah. All right. Just a straight from the heart. All right, part. first question. What amp okay, rural Tanica says What amp emulation do you prefer, Naveen? Why are you assuming that Naveen is the only person here that uh, that prefers amp emulation? <laughs> well, I think because really I play guitar. Uh, uh, but I do, too. Point. Not for and Anthios. I post it on the internet. Not for Anthios, you don't play guitar. Whatever. Also, did y'all check out Black uh, Friar yet? No, I meant to look that up before we started the episode. Wait a minute, what's Black Friar? I don't know. Maybe it's a band mm. that we didn't check out. I don't know. What I will emulation. check that out right after this episode. All right. Maybe it's an check it out. maybe it's an emulation device. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah you're kind of turned away back to the mic. <laughs> you know how you know when vocalists will do that? What? Um, I don't know if it's such a thing now, but back in the day it would be a thing that like vocalists would turn away from the crowd. Yeah, that's kind of what you're doing right I now. Did it at a, I did crowd. it at a couple <laughs> shows. I'm not going to Like lie. the whole time. Uh, yeah, I might have done it at, like, the second or third show I ever played. Just the whole Turned time? Turned away from the crowd. Wow, that's... No, maybe sometimes. I never did the whole time thing. Okay, so amp emulation over here. Well, um, I have recently got the STL Tone. STL Tones? I think that's what it's called. And I got the that Tone sense. Hub. That's what I got. I got it because my boy Mark Lewis did a tone pack with them. <laughs> did you just read his name off the And uh <laughs> why did you pick up the paper? <laughs> his name's not on there. Uh well I might have made a note on there about it. You don't <laughs> okay. know. You said you just said you didn't read any of the questions. That might have just been something that I was saying to oh. because my answers All suck. Right. Uh <laughs> no. Uh, Mark sent me that, and damn, it uh, all, it sounds really, really sick. I gotta say, I really like it a lot. It sounds heavy AF. It really does. Like That's the palm mutes, dude. It's something I I usually what I usually tend to go for with uh my guitar work, if you will, is how clear the speed picking is because yeah, I'm really into yeah, that. Yeah. But on this, there's been a couple um. Like on the new Entheos, we we have some chug parts. I'm not gonna lie, there's some chugging there's going some on. There's some good old chugging. And uh, I was like, "Damn, that sounds heavy." And so now I ca- I found myself like adding in extra chugs here and there. <laughs> I've noticed that. I've you been really like adding them in just because it sounds so heavy. You have been doing that, and they're a part. That's what I'm saying. You've been uh, tracking real guitars, and now there are just chugs showing up everywhere. Yeah, like changing stuff. Yeah. Like instead of it being like uh, like. It'll be like, you know, like just yeah. adding that in there. It's just heavy. It sounds so heavy. So one I mean, one thing 
that we have not forgotten to do on the Senthios record is be a heavy band. I, I think that we may have forgot to be heavy in the past. <laughs> and we have definitely times. not forgot to be heavy. No, we remembered. We remembered. We were like, oh, yeah. Remember heavy. you are heavy. Heaviness stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's super heavy. And we're not talking about beer with this question. So that's one failed. Oh, yeah. We were supposed to try to incorporate Damn, I beer. I was like, what are so you talking about? I do drink. Sometimes I will have a beer while tracking. Okay. With that. No. S- that wasn't even. Boo. Wah, wah, wah. Well, you cover the fucking off and getting us a nice cold picture of butt, okay? See you around. <laughs> I don't know about that, dude. All right, Burning the Hive. Not music related, but what's your favorite book? You want me to answer this? Well, yeah, we'll both answer. Um, I think my favorite book is... Uh, that's a really tough question. but It's a tough question. I'll say the first one that came to mind. What is Isn't that? that a good trick to play with yourself? Yeah. It's like the I got, first I got thing the first that comes that to mind. To mind yeah. The first thing that came to mind to me was uh, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath because I've read it the most throughout my life. I have a copy by my bed. Yeah. And I read it all the time. I mean, I just read excerpts of it at this point, but it's just a really good book and I'm a huge Sylvia Plath fan. So it's the type of book that you can just read like, a couple lines and get something out of it? Uh, no, no, I mean... Now that I've read it like five times, I can do that. I know where I'm at in the book, but yeah. you, no, you need to. Re- it's a novel. All right. Whereas Sylvia Plath is a poet. I'm a huge fan of her poetry. And I will say before every uh, writing, before I like really go into the Entheos album cycles, I'll go through and read a bunch of Sylvia Plath. Dang. So what's the book about? The, it's about the uh, mental illness. It's about a woman dis- descending into mental illness. It's uh so it's really good. So it's fiction? That's what the bell jar is. It yeah, it is. But I I mean it could be you could say that it's about that sh- she wrote it that it was uh, biographical. Okay. So all right. Even though sense. it's not about her, you know, she did kill herself, so She did. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn. So it's got a bad ending in that way. I mean, the book doesn't. And at the end of the book, she actually like it gets better. Wow. That's pretty tragic. Yeah. Well, she died in the 70s, so. It's still tragic. Yeah, it's yeah, totally still tragic. tragic. Still tragic. She was a great poet. Wow. Tortured artist, I guess. Mm-hmm. That happens. Yeah, I re- uh, I'm a big fan of her poetry and her writing, so. That's the first book that came to mind for All me. Right. What's the first one that came to mind for you? Uh, the first one that came to mind to, to me is uh, Ashtavaka Samhita. Yeah, that's what you've probably read the most. I think I've read it three times, and I still have no idea what it's about. Wow, that's super. <laughs> no, meta. I'm just kidding. I I know what it's about. It's uh, it's like part of the Vedic thought, the Advaita Vedanta thing, and that's um, spiritual stuff. Right. So that's what it's about. But it is the type of book that you can you could literally just kind of open it up to any page, and each verse it's in verse style. All those Vedic uh, and the sub Vedic. Uh, texts are in verse style so they're all verses and uh you could read any verse and it's like a meditation in of its in it in it of itself yeah the good thing about that book i've read i haven't read all of it but i've read you know some of the verses the good thing about it it reminds me of like a daily inspiration yeah. you know that's honestly it really is that's what it, we've it probably be. said this before but that's what uh, uh, like uh, there's a certain form of internet social media influencing that yep. that's all like inspirational posting and you could just make an entire account yeah. based off of any s- th- that book or 100%. several other spiritual yeah. books. And I mean, and I guess the overview in short is that it's supposed to be being present now and, and um, realizing that, your true nature and what whatever that is deeper but i don't want to say i don't want to get too into that because i'm not really you know the best person to talk about it let's put it that way but it's a great book and i read it all the time uh, i have it ne- next to my bed and i will read a little bit isn't of it that funny the, the answers that came from us both are so drastically different the bedside but I, I really like like spiritual books and things like that but 
That's just yeah. the book that I've read. Uh, the Bell Jar is the book that I've probably read the most since I was a kid. Yeah, I, I believe that. I mean, I have. I never really read books until right. quarantine, to be honest. I read, uh, let's see, before the quarantine, I read Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. A couple of those. I read um, Lu- my friend Luke's dad's book. He wrote. He writes books. Shakedown Street. Shakedown Street. Named Street. after a Grateful Dead song. Okay, I read that. I read uh, Nonviolent Communication. That's kind of like a self-help book. I've read I guess. a few excerpts of it, but not. Yeah, read that. I read uh, that might have been it. Yeah. But then during quarantine, yeah, I got <coughs> all into this kind of spiritual stuff. Read like I don't know, probably five books or something. And that's that's awesome. Anything that's that can inspire me. you to like pick up a book and read. <coughs> yeah, I like, I like audio books too. I like a lot of Stephen King audio books. Stuff uh, like that. I love stuff like that. Fiction. I mean, I haven't. I I think I've read. I've listened to a little bit of Game of Thrones on audiobook. Yeah, I did that too. I honestly got. Uh, I read. I started reading Game of Thrones, but I got kind of bored because the first book is essentially like right on par with the the show, and it, I was just like, I I know all of this. You're like, I, I already bored know what's going to happen bit. here. Yeah. <coughs> well, boo. Yeah, bored me a little bit. Yeah. So. Um, that's what I, that's the type of stuff I like to read for sure. And, uh, we'll keep doing it. Well, there you go. <laughs> no beer well, involved in that one. Good to know. Okay. Uh, Loca Chica 19. You want me to read I this like one? I like that. That's Shane? like an, tw- that's like an AIM already. screen name. I like that. Yeah, go for that's it. That's like a legit screen name. Yeah. Cause you know, a lot of, actually there are a lot of screen names on here, you know, back in the day. My first one was Toxicity 454. Was it Or really? no, Blaine 203 and then Toxicity 454. Four. Yeah. Yeah, Blaine. Now f- the oh, I used to chat with Blaine for, what was it? Oh, that was when I grew up then. Toxicity must have been, must yeah. have been the early one. Because we chatted on AIM when you had Blaine 203. That's how whatever. old we are. We have chatted on AIM before. I think that was kind of towards the end of of AIM. Though. It really was. It was I like think you were the last tail. person that I ever talked to. On I only AIM. went on there to, t- to chat with you. Well, there up. you go. So yeah, ask this question. Of you. Okay, Jeez, do some heavy lifting, man. I know. Read. I've been sitting here just yeah. Read me read. questions. <laughs> Loca Chica nineteen. I'm changing my screen name to that. By the way, I know. I'm Loca uh, Chica twenty now. <laughs> <laughs> Most important advice you got. As a musician starting out. So I think what she means is the best advice that you received when you were starting out. That's what I'm getting from the question. Was that hard to figure out? I didn't. <laughs> well, I could say mo- uh, you could take you could interpret that as most uh, important advice you have for a musician starting out. Uh, or I would never. No, I don't think so. Naveen. Like, what do you it got? Never would have been taken. Like, that what way. do you got? What do you got for me? Uh, What's okay, the, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You're, okay. right. You're right. right. You're right. Yeah, uh, You're right. You're okay. right. I get proven. <laughs> All right. See now. The, now the audience right. gets to see how, right. how I really get treated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get called out and se- and told that you're wrong a lot. <laughs> so, most important advice you got as a musician starting out? What? It, I just read it. Yeah, I guess I'm wrong. I just I read I'm, it. I guess I'm wrong. So, Jenny, what's the advice? What do you got? No, you tell me. <laughs> Okay, um, hmm. I didn't really get any advice. I know, I'm I mean, trying to remember advice. Because I, I hung out at like hardcore and metal shows. So They're I mean, like, fuck you, little kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean. They didn't want to give you advice. They wanted to kick you out of the show. What advice was there? There is no <laughs> advice. It's like, th- this is people <laughs> don't that don't. do this. Yeah, people that don't make any money. <laughs> they just hang out. Be, be straight edge. That was the advice. Yeah, there was that. But like I went to metal shows too. No one was straight edge there. In my day, and it's like this now again. Yeah. It, well, yeah, everything is, was real separated. My mom told me to stop playing music. That was, wow. wait, that wasn't the best. Ad- I don't think she actually did that. That was just a joke. That's a great <laughs> My advice. mom did not do that, but, uh, that also wouldn't have been the best advice. I mean, it would so. be a good advice for, um, not like playing it, music. Like if you're going to go get a, a, an be a successful job. job or yeah. Or any kind of job. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Yeah, because the advice would have been. Advice. I'm trying to think. Who gave me advice? 
I think it was like, you know, Starting some kind of not advice that I got directly, but advice that I did get was when you play shows to be real weary of the promoter and always get paid. Who told you that? Just like that was just kind of the vibe. That was that like I the got. word on the street. Yeah, it was the word on the street. I got some words on the you know, street. It was like, like that. hey, man, yeah. you need to fucking do whatever it takes to get your. Don't let them fuck with you. Like, yeah. if they are trying to not pay you, be like, no, you need to pay me. Yeah, that was some word on the street. You know, that was sure. kind of. And then in the Shep Gordon documentary, advice. you know, the Shep Gordon documentary, he was like, you know, the, the manager's job is to. The first job is to get the money. Second yeah. job is to get the money. His third job is to get the money. So. Yeah. I guess that's get a the good, money. That's a, I like that documentary a lot. Yeah, really good. Yeah. It's the Shep Gordon documentary. What? It's Alice Cooper. Uber Mitch. It's called. Uber Mitch. Uber Mitch. Yeah. If you haven't seen it. Go see it. That's a really recommend. good documentary. A really good. And one. I usually, no, I, you're the one who doesn't like music documentaries as much, I would say. I don't, I don't know. I like them. Okay. Sometimes they hit a little too close to home. Yeah. And it's like, eh. Sometimes when you first kick it on, I'm like, really, dude? We're really yeah. going to go there? You know yeah. what? When I had to turn off that I was really into at first, the Garth Brooks one. Oh, no. That one was great because he was uh, so we, weird. We might should go finish that tonight. Yeah, I agree. But I could only watch like three episodes at a time because I was just like getting. Uh, it's a lot I, I of like manufactured uh, feelings going on. Oh, on there. dude. It was like a written script. Yeah. Anyways, so. It was killer, though. I like music documentaries a lot. So I like, like, classic the answer to the question is watch music documentaries. What is the question even? Oh, the advice? <laughs> 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 well, we got way off track on that Watch one. documentaries. Okay. That's the... Uh, <laughs> Best music advice in reality. The promoter thing is what I... But I don't know. Does this person want us to give advice forth? Because, like... No, we're talking about the advice that we, we got. We we're not giving it advice. Forward? No. You know, some good advice I got was to be myself. Yeah, I And I, I got that from a guy who I've actually been talking to recently. He was the guitar player for my band back then. No, did he play bass? I think he was like a guitar player for the band I was in when I was 16 or so. Okay. And I think I've talked about him a little before. He asked me, he was a person who asked me to stop sounding so much like Randy Blythe when I did vocals. Damn. And I was like, I, I was 16 or 17 when that happened. And I've been talking to him again recently. And he is a really good bass player. So that was the best advice that you got. Right That's there. some Jenny, advice. <laughs> that was the best advice. That you was got. really good advice. Yeah. And it was in the form of don't sound as much like this guy, but it was like. I, I, it made me step back and be like, yeah, I need to sound. You got to have your own thing in this. Yeah, that's true. I thought that was really good advice. I'm actually now thinking of some advice that it wasn't really advice, but Leo, mm -hmm. singer of Manimosity, just sort of told me this. You know, he was like, I if you. And this is this is on the business end, but if he said, if you're selling if you're selling olive oil and apples and mostly people are buying the olive oil and not the apples, then just start selling only olive oil. Wow. And I was like, wow, man, that's, that's really smart. That's true. For a 14 year old. <laughs> he was 14 when he I told don't know, me. probably. Well, wasn't that smart for a, a 16 year old to tell me? Yeah. I mean, like, we were young and, and that was in re regards to like the type of merch that we had because we sold a lot of merch. Yeah. So <clears throat> animosity was a merch band. We were we were that. I think we've talked about that gold foil hoodie before, but that was that hoodie was making its rounds. I think it was the first of its kind. And back in our day, well, I don't know if it was our day, but like back in the year of two thousand and seven or six and eight, that gold foil hoodie was the shit. It's true. And a lot of bands started printing stuff with that. W was Animosity the first band to have that? Uh, we were the first band to have. I can't wow. claim anything about that though, because that was a hundred percent Leo's idea. Good so job, I'm Leo. Not like, Leo started a. Yep, a we did it. I mean, if it was up to me, who knows what the? I mean, we wouldn't have even probably had merch. Right. You know what I mean? So we wouldn't. But have that been, nobody gold heard foil the thing, no one does it anymore. I haven't seen it in years. Yeah. Uh, That's a good thing. It's pretty tacky. Well, you know what happened to it? It washed out really easily. It did. Like the. I don't know if it was tacky. It was kind of cool on some merch. It's definitely tacky, Jenny. Come on. Yeah, but it's got, you know, it's like uh, the merch. Are you wearing merch, it? Are you wearing it? Yesteryear. Are you wearing it? A band prints a gold foil. I'm not wearing it. Straight up. 
Uh, I might wear it. I like the color gold. You would wear it. I might actually wear a gold hoodie. The with, hoodie itself with is black gold. black print on it. Wow. That's I don't know if I'd bold. wear either of these things I'm saying. <laughs> no, definitely not. I, I wouldn't wear it. I'm, you know what I do? You hater. know what I would do? If a gold foil print hoodie was printed, I would buy it and I would never wear it. I would buy it being like, oh, cool. Well, then that's something that we should probably print if that's the case, because I want people to buy shit. Me too. So vote be. below. Vote. I don't know where we have comments. Drop it in the comments. Le- hit where smash we subscribe have, yeah. or whatever you do. You guys should do that. I mean, we should say that sometimes, right? Okay. All hit like and smash the subscribe button. And then button comment and tell and us if you'd buy a gold foil hoodie. And we probably still won't print it, even if you would buy it. But yeah, we'll think about it. Because who the hell knows who does that and how we much it costs to it. get made. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, that was the advice. You know, be yourself. And, and that was pretty much the worst. Maybe don't print gold foil hoodies. All time. And then what this was the is other going one? to be a really long podcast. And then what was we've the got other one? About 30 more questions. <laughs> what was the other advice? Get the money. Get the money. Get the money. All right. Money. We are right. only on question four. Shit. Kevin Young says thoughts on your direct sound headphones. Um, they sound they, good. Yeah, they actually are really sick, and I do recommend them, especially for drummers. That's that's initially why I got them, and they sound great. There are other brands that have the type of like it's like a shooting headphone or or like a construction headphone with speakers in there, and oh, a shooting headphone. <clears throat> Those come sometimes with speakers. No, like if you go to the shooting range, you'll have these, but they won't have the wires, right? Right, or if you're doing song something you might throw these on mm-hmm. so they are like the extreme noise canceling yeah. and other people make them but i haven't had i haven't heard them sound as good as these these actually yeah, sound, sound really good. good so i mean i won't record without them straight up wow. it's a nightmare without them and that's how you can play really hard and still hear yourself and uh so and that, they're also good killer. to just wear because you put them on when i'm playing drums yeah, there you go. Sometimes <laughs> if, you know, your fiancé is taking a spin on your kit and it, you know, tr- you're trying to do something in there and the cymbals are getting crashed in your ear, you uh, throw these headphones on. Usually Take said fiancé plays with a closed hi-hat, though, 99% of the time. Is that you? Me. And also your fiancé has a weird time with dynamics. You've been saying that about me and for the past known 10 years. And is known to crash a heavy bell ride. I love that. <laughs> it sounds so good. Why can't... You know, the thing about music is there should be no limitations. So why can't I crash a, well, a Chan, bell Well, Channing, you ride? have... Um, no limitations. Broke, you have broke down all the limitations with regards to symbol work. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, here. Let me read the next one. Uh, <laughs> uh-oh. This is... This is <coughs> have you guys... You want me to read this one, Channing? Yeah, I do. Okay. Have you guys ever considered doing an animosity cover video? I think that would be sick. Wait, you think that? No, he said that. Yeah. I, first of all, well, I don't, not a first of all. I, I'm probably never going to do an animosity cover video. Yeah. I don't, I don't not personally either. need to be a part of every project that Naveen has ever done. And I'm not a part of every project that you've ever done. Uh, Anthe- Anthios, I totally understand the association. Don't get me wrong. We started the band with several members of Animosity. However, we always started the band with the um, uh, uh, intention of being a new band. Yeah. Definitely. And I totally understand why people think of it that way, but that's not what we're... That's not the it's goal. Not what we're about. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't to like bring back the past. Yeah. We're not like super nostalgic over here going, wow. I didn't even, Naveen and I weren't <laughs> dating when Animosity was a band. And I yeah. <clears throat> totally respect and have love for everyone who was in that band. But that's just not, I'm not yeah. going to do a cover of Animosity. No, no I, I don't think I would either. I mean, why would I? That's a lot of work and I don't want to do it. Yeah, people so. would like to see you do it for sure, but I understand. I don't know, man. Sometimes I, uh, it's yeah. not. It, it It is a lot of work to do that stuff. It's been like 13 years since you've played an animosity song, so I can totally understand yeah. why you wouldn't want to like go through the 
the trouble to relearn it. I could probably learn it on to. drums pretty quickly. Yeah. But I mean, who's going to play the guitar? Am I, I going to do it? Am I going to like figure out the guitar parts? Oh yeah, I, that I don't too. think so. I don't want to do that. Are we going to bring in <clears throat> old members to do it? I, I don't know. That's just why would I do that? Apart from people, they want to see it. Yeah. And then you know, why? What, what's the point of that when you can just drop animosity vibes comments in all my videos? You know, just do that. That gets just the job do done. It. it totally does. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah, no, I'm I have not considered doing that. No. But, you know, I get why people have asked about that ever since Entheos started. Just because of the circumstances. But on the flip side of the coin, I, I think we're sort of lucky that not that many people really like other people have tried to start new bands and they're going to be stuck in that old role. Yeah, like they're playing the same music, yeah, you mean? Exactly. Totally. Totally. So I think I think he just wants us to do it because it would be really cool. Oh, yeah. You know? I, and it I, would I be totally cool. Get, I agree with that. It would be cool. I 100% get why someone would want that to happen. Yeah. So I think I it's, totally it's get on the flip side cool that we don't like need to do it or we do exist you know what's cool that. to me is that animosity made such a mark that people are still asking you about it that is cool and That's same with cool. flesh rot and same with your time in animals as leaders people even you know about my band systems some people bring it up to me it's cool that anyone is like is invested in anything that you've done before or that yeah. i've done before uh, that's a really positive way of putting yeah, it. Yeah, so it's, and I've always personally been, I've looked at it as a great thing because we were lucky enough that a lot of people were interested in our band because of the members of Animosity being in our band. Yeah, that's 100% And that, true. Was, that was really helpful for our band. And I've, uh, I've always looked at it that way. And it's a great thing. Yeah, we got to face the facts here. That is, uh, that did give us a advantage it really did it It really did and you know there are a lot of people who uh yeah just followed you guys from that into you know the faceless or whatever else you did and then all the way into our band and for that i'm eternally grateful however we we do aspire to be a different band yeah we don't yeah like our intention is not to sound exactly like animosity or exactly like flesh rot and we don't <clears throat> or yeah. like animals and we don't if you yeah. listen to our discography 100%. we just don't sound like that um and that's something that i've al also always thought was so cool about you guys that you did like want to mi do something else you weren't yeah, trying yeah, to revisit exactly, the past exactly exactly no i don't feel that way at all i'm not i did been there done that Word. you know what i'm saying so let's the next question. Cheney, I got probably should read this one as it is sort of for you. Dalen Durrell. I think I heard mention on the last pod on the last episode of clean vocals for your new music. Just one song or many? Cheney, take it away. Uh well expand on that thought. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> you did hear mention. Um so, for the record, there will be singing on the new album. There is one song that has that's pretty predominantly singing, I would say. It's not all singing. Mm -hmm. But we should make mention uh, yeah. that the, the, the vein of song that it is is not like a straight-up pop song. You know, that's yeah. not the idea behind it whatsoever. Definitely not. We want everything that we do to be dark and to be evil-sounding. And so th this is a song with singing on it, but it is, it is, in my opinion, still pretty dark and has a really cool vibe. It's witchy singing. It's witchy. Yeah. It's sort of like in the Chelsea Wolf vein. You might, you know, a little bit in that style. Yeah. So it's not like, I don't know, some pop metal song. It's yeah, not it's like not that. like pop. It's not what we're doing. No. So um, don't get it fucking twisted over here. Yeah, so, and I'm really proud of the song. I've It is one of the songs that I've demoed. Um, Me too. And when we did it, I was like, holy shit, I, I fucking can't believe we just did that. That's insanity. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Uh, so there is that one song, and then it will be peppered in other places in the album. The, the album, don't get us wrong, the album is predominantly screaming. 
Yeah. I'm still a death metal vocalist. And it's really I mean, heavy. However, it's the most dynamic that I've personally ever been. And I would say that for the entire band. It's 100% the most dy- dynamic record that we've made. Definitely. It's got, yeah, I'd say it's got the most heavy and then the most not heavy, probably. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. with, yeah. But even the song with singing is, is heavy still. Oh, it's, it's totally like heavy. It's and heavy. And it's not like we're not following a formula, really. It's not verse- screaming chorus singing it's it's they're screaming and singing that's throughout yeah, the song yeah. and I, I honestly that one i really can't wait to see what people think of that one i know because it's just i don't know it's it works and i think the people that we've shown it to like our friends and stuff i've been like what are they gonna think of it but i've got feedback like oh this makes sense yeah, yeah it's not um Sticking out as like weird. Well, musically, I would look back at a song like Black Static yeah. that we opened our last record with. That's it's in that vein. Yes, that's 100% it's very correct. much <clears throat> our band's song. Yeah, it sounds like that for sure. Uh, Alex Belmontes for new album, what amps and cab are you thinking? Love you guys, peace. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be up to the mix engineer. On this one. Yeah. We are sending it out to a big boss. And uh, he'll decide on that one straight up. I'll take his word for it. Yeah. To be honest. Because I'm not. Honestly, I play guitar. You know, I know how to play guitar. I know how to write um, riffs and all that kind of stuff. But guitar gear is really not my thing. I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm not going to act like I'm this good pro guitar player. I'm well, not. At the end of the day, you're not. You're the drummer. Yeah. So I've my role in bands has always been drummer. But I write. So I'm good at writing. I'm good at making it sound good on a computer. But as far as actual gear goes, that's not my thing. So I got to I gotta call in some pros for that one. But Hell I don't yeah. know. Maybe hopefully a nice uh, i want to use real amps for sure i want to use that would be not yeah i would assume that that's what we're gonna do yeah i mean i like um friedman's and angles and we want a we want a fucking heavy we want to be, heavy yeah. guitar tone for this ripping album dicks yeah so so that's the goal some sort of dick ripping situation some sort would be the best all right this is lucas how was your writing process for this album? So hyped. Thanks. We're hyped too, man. Uh, well, the writing process, was, it started, okay, it started with, we got back from a tour, mm-hmm. and I just really wanted to make something that was really fast and technical and heavy and fuck you kind of sounding. I remember you, pu- I remember <coughs> pulling you over to merch one night on that tour and being like, Naveen, the next album that we make has to be super it's heavy. Crazy. Yeah. Super heavy. So it started off as really, really crazy, kind of like almost flesh rot vein, I'd say. And then um, in that song, I worked in some kind of weird melodies, and those kind of gave rise to another song. And then there's kind of this repeat um themes that happen throughout the album it's a prog album yeah it's don't, really don't it's progressive it in that way that the, the whole thing is kind of mixed together and it's really it's super a, progressive we have repeating there are motifs that repeat themselves yeah. that come back yeah. um basically the way that it was written the f- the entire first side flows together as one song as one part and this entire second song second side flows together as one yeah. part so there are songs but it's also a, f- a piece in it, it, it within yeah. itself and it's the reason four pieces. i mean we were we were gonna have it be one big long song that was cut up into tracks but we wanted to make it work for vinyl right so see this is so happened sorry to interrupt you yeah. but this is what we're talking about with the thinking out every little minuscule detail like we've written the album to fit appropriately on vinyl exactly so we're thinking out everything about this album yeah, nothing is, is going to be untouched and it's not typical that i think that we have done that before well you know, last time we were like how does this record fit well, on vinyl? full disclosure black static and white noise we opened the record with them but that is not how we wrote the record pulse was going to open the record but the way that black static and white noise were placed on vinyl we, we're gonna split them up 
Oh, yeah. But it's a part one and part two song. So we were like, we're not doing that. Let's put that at the beginning of the record. Yeah. So, I mean, that's shit that we didn't think about. Yeah. But we're thinking about it now. That's for damn sure. But it also it also worked because the first side, if you want to call it, felt like it came to an ending. It really did. So we were kind of like, well, that works for vinyl. We could have it be a two-side situation. Yeah, and I like that when I listen to vinyl because we have a lot of uh, records. And when I listen to a vinyl, I like for the entire first side to uh, uh, be a piece. Agreed. Because then it just flows perfectly and there are no... You know, I'm sure we'll wa- we'll write a record again that's more like song, song, yeah, song, yeah. song, song. Because it's fun to like switch it up every so often. But for this record, it's it's a, a, a pe- two pieces that essentially fit together as a yeah. whole. Because w- I think we will end up doing something that happened on the Soul Niger vinyl. Which we have the Soul Niger vinyl. Yeah. Our friend Bill news got it flash. for us. We yeah, Newsflash. We have it. And on the Soul Niger vinyl, it is altered so that the first side fades out perfectly. Well, they put a little th- where <coughs> the song ends on the out, on the CD. On the CD, it goes. I don't know the track name. I'm really bad with names, but it ends and there's like a quick break and then it goes straight into the next song. Right. Well, what they did on the vinyl was they ended it and then they had a little delay trail that kept going. Yep. And I was like, man, that's super hard. Yeah. You know, so we will have to do something like that. Yeah. Because I'm sure on this on the CD. And the Spotify or whatever. It'll just flow. With oh, some I'm sort assu- of yeah, the CD and the Spotify will be different from yeah. the vinyl. Maybe not. I would assume I don't so. Know. Who knows? We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, we'll see. But see, the, the, these are the type of things that we're thinking out, essentially. Yeah. Every little detail. Yeah, and then the second side, um, I had it pretty much written, and then... I'd say like a week or so before recording, I was like, uh, this isn't really cutting it. Yeah. And I went back and sort of rewrote it, wrote it and just spiced it up a bunch. I spent like, out way better. yeah, I had like basically, I gave myself some time, which was good. I had like um, a whole week off or something like that. And I just, it was a good time, man. Just me and the guitar writing just all day, every day. Well, that um, singing song that we're talking about, that, w- it, that came it about. was not on the record before that week. Before That's exactly right. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I didn't it even think of that. It wasn't on the record. That wasn't on the album. Side two was a lot more zany. Side two, I would say, was a lot more like, yeah. yeah and I was like, you know what? This it. isn't, I was listening to the first side and I was like, man, the second side is just, not killing there it. frankly was not enough metal going on on the second side it, wasn't it became metal. like it was super prog but it was almost dad rock to a degree it was almost dad prog yeah, to a degree yeah. like we did how we were saying earlier how we didn't forget to make it heavy well that we, we sort had of did forgotten yeah. maybe we will maybe we will put that side out someday just as something else huh That's we could I do did. b-sides That's true but yeah and then we took um <laughs> We took some other stuff that we had made in the past, and I was thinking, hey, let's make this. We, we've talked about it before, and we, uh, the theme song for yeah. the podcast, that came about because Chaney and I were like, oh, let's start like an industrial kind of project, right? Dude, the full reality, it was, we were sort of unhappy with where Entheos was going yep. before we decided to be a bit, to have it be just the two of us we were sort of unhappy with it we were discussing starting a project that was just the two of us exactly and we naveen had written a few songs we even had like a couple of band practices (laughs) we we did and it was fun yeah it was really fun and there were a couple of songs i think there were like four or five songs yeah so one of them became the theme song one of them is the theme song of this and then copper crab so I had another one of them floating around that was that was like in that vein, but yeah. darker. And I was like, dude, let's make that into a fucking Entheos song. Yeah, man. but there was another one where that has a fucking killer chorus yeah. on it. But the verse sucks. The verse sucks. So we might rework that in the future. You think so? Maybe. I always try to get you to rework, re- rework well, the it the chorus and you won't is do really it. good. I hate the, I fucking yeah. hate the verse. I don't like it at all. But anyway, this other one that I'm thinking about, it. It actually used. did work as a good Entheos song. Yeah, because it had uh, 
it was super heavy. Yeah. And I was like, when we were practicing it, I was screaming during it. And I was like, well, I thought that if we started a side project, I was just not going to be screaming at all. Yeah. So but anyway, like, when okay, we yeah. decided, essentially when we decided like to have the band be just the two of us and continued writing the record, we added that song. Yeah, so I was like, let's start off the second side with that song. Yeah. And then from there, it just kind of took off. And I used elements from the original second side. And yeah, it was just a really good time. Yeah. It was really fucking fun. Actually, I, I love go writing to it after this. Yeah, you're I love your writing and I'm excited <laughs> to see like vocally yeah. because we haven't started officially tracking. Yeah, we've vocals. done a few. Uh, Two full songs, yeah. kind of demoed, I guess you could say, and then we've done parts here and there. Right. But yeah, the vocals have come out really I'm just really sick. excited. It's really, honestly, the band that I've always wanted to be a part of. I feel like my tastes are fully fulfilled. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, I'm just so excited. I'm in 100% agreement there. Uh, next question. Kyler, what's the best advice you have for a young drummer with a passion to take it seriously? I've got advice. Just take uh, it seriously. Yeah, I know. That's that's actually that's it the right there. I take mean, it seriously, and then everyone else will follow. Yep. That's that's. What Especially else can you say? if you're young, man. You're a fucking drummer, and that's what you are, and that's what you do, and that's why if anyone asks you, you tell them that that's what you do. There you go. You don't work at. Yeah, be Hollywood about Hollywood video. Be about you it. are a fucking drummer. Yeah, have some sticks in your back pocket at all times. Yeah, not that it's not okay to have other. You know, hobbies. I there are a lot of things that both Naveen and I are into, but yeah, I'd say definitely be about it. Spend the put in the time. Yeah. Um. Make yourself the best drummer that you can be. Start then, making some videos. Throw yeah. some videos on the internet. Yep, and that's going to be important too. But I sometimes I see people that are spending a little too much time doing that and not enough time practicing. I agree. And I've I've been actually guilty of that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, believe it or not, uh, but. So definitely make sure that you're practicing more than making videos and stuff like that. That's good Content, advice. if good you will. Advice. But yeah, that's going to be important. And honestly, what's so sick about these days is you can do that. I mean, fuck, I would have loved to do that when I was younger. Me too. That's all I would have done. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. So I feel like I would have started taking it earlier or taking it like even more incredibly seriously younger. Definitely. Definitely. But at, at the same time, it's a distraction. And yeah. sometimes I feel fortunate that I didn't have that distraction. Like, the only thing for me to do was play guitar or drums when right. I was a kid. Like, I didn't have... I wasn't working on, like, getting the lighting legit. Well, there's also the whole other side that you can fall into, like, the only doing covers forever trying to get views trap. Exactly. And I don't... Don't get me wrong. I've done a couple of covers. I don't think it's wrong to do covers whatsoever but i do think that like you shouldn't overemphasize that portion of it throw yeah. up some covers be a fucking badass but also focus on like making yourself a better player and making good material definitely and i mean obviously for me trying to be original was yeah not, not, original. not just for the sake of being original like oh i don't want i want to be different or whatever but you know just finding your own sort of sound or that's and that's really just stuff that you like yeah. You know, for me, me uh, the idea that I'm original, it's really just I know what I like. Yeah. So that's what I want to try to do. I like to, you know, not just for a drummer, but for people who do other things as well. It's like I feel like that's really good advice in every instrument. Take everything you see with a grain of salt. Like a lot of vo vocals now, it's big to be to do like a guttural or a tunnel and then do a high. But really what's cool and what uh, sticks out to me in a vocalist or a drummer or a guitar player or anything is them having a unique style because eventually all of that shit just runs together you know yeah definitely. i want to i i like seeing stuff that's different yeah that's what's so cool and it's easy to like homogenize yourself because there's a lot of like stuff that sounds the same right Right, and it's easy to make stuff that sounds the yeah. same. and I think it's also easy to be somewhat original, and it, and this is something I thought about a lot, like See, a lot. Totally. I mean, all it takes is you know you do 
90% of something and then change it 10% and it's now sort of original. Well, don't you think that this is something that a lot of people fall into? Like the more that you're exposed, the more you start to lack originality in a way because you're like, oh, that works. I'm going to do that. Oh, yeah, that uh, works. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Oh, that, works that like part of me doesn't work. I'm going to start not doing that. Mm-hmm. You know? Like works meaning people like it? Uh, I mean, like, s- yeah, like you, s- yeah, exactly. Like you start to become, you start to see what is work, what works, what's popular, what people, what people like, and you start to maybe mold yourself into that yeah, a little yeah, more to definitely. try to, s- and <clears throat> I think it's important to keep a uniqueness about you. Definitely. Be influenced, but don't become your influence. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I agree for sure. And there's a good balance in between all of it. They're totally because you don't want to go. I mean, you can too far. You can go way off the rails, but I noticed that for me personally, when like this, the stuff that I do personally that's similar but different from other people, I think actually, if I just objectively (laughs) look at it, is the sickest. And when I go real far into like originality land. It's just, it's cool and it's really original, but it's just, it's, it's not as good at yeah. the end of the day. So yeah. I think there's a good balance. I agree with you. That's why I take it all with a grain of salt, you know? Take what with a grain of salt? Uh, that's like a all weird, this, that I'm saying all this, I'm saying all like the stuff really that you see on the internet or like take, take all of the influence with a grain of salt. Be influenced. It's just like I just said, be influenced, but don't like be too no, overly influenced. Yeah. I guess with a grain of salt isn't the exact right expression to use. I don't know. That that saying is always like, I don't know, it weirds me out. Yeah, that might not be the right expression. Really Why does it weird you out? I don't know. I, just don't, I guess I get it. I, I know what it I refers what to, but I don't really get it like literally. Well, a grain of salt like sweeten or like makes everything taste a little better. So take it with So I don't really get it. Yeah, maybe I'm using it wrong. Or like, I mean, I get it. It's like, don't take it. Take it, and it may or may not happen. It's really what I, what it means for the most part, right? I don't know. What I'm saying is just take the influence and <laughs> don't not, be overly influenced. I think saying. that's the best way to say it. I have no fucking idea. Naveen. Yeah, but I will say for myself, I I've always wanted to just be like my influences. That's what I've tried to do, and it's we'll come have out. a lot of different influences there too. You go. There you, go. That, you know that helps, and I think I've done a good job at doing that. That's one, one thing that I've done right. Well, this isn't about you. This is about Kyler. Well, he's asking me advice. Well, I guess he's asking I you, think apparently. I Kyler's asking all of us. Drummer advice. I'm just Chinese saying, drummer just advice take it is seriously. Cra- crash the heavy bell ride. You just use the heavy bell ride as a crash. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Gamma Blast Delights. Will the Infinite Nothing and Primal be released on vinyl? Uh, I'm working to have Tin, the Infinite Nothing, released on vinyl. I would like to do it this year. We will see. Tin. Yeah, we talk about it for sure. And we actually, we want to do something with Primal. We actually redid one of the songs um, last year. And it sounds really cool. Yeah, Kind of really reworked good. it I don't a know. little bit. I don't know. And so maybe we'll do something with that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't know. I've, yeah, anyway. Next question is Next from question. the same person. When will y'all and Creator Destroyer do an episode together? Also, Laura from Light This City. Uh, we've talked about doing an episode together. I've talked to Ben about it. Yeah. It's sort of weird I'm that you would ask. Is this person friends with them? Why would he might think be a fan. Okay, because like, we have talked to them quite a bit about doing it. Yeah, and I'm a big Light This City fan. Um, I've talked to Ben about doing it. I think we will wait probably until the end of the year. But it will happen for sure. Uh-huh. Big fan. Um, big fan. And during Avery, where can we buy, download the Flesh Rod album? I'm late to the game, but it's sick. We were just looking this up the other day. You can buy it on IndieMerch.com. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah I was going to Metal Blade's site. Let me see here. Indie Merch. Let's I'll be see. right back. I'm going to see if Flesh Rot is available on MetalBlade.com. Uh... Yeah, <clears throat> here it is. Indie merch, twelve bucks ships in one day. And for those of you who don't know, Flesh Rot is 
uh, somewhat of a solo project I did way back in 2010. Holy shit, it's 11 years old. And that's me and the vocalist from Job for a Cowboy, Johnny Davey. Um, but yeah, it's like a super death... It is it is really death metal, but it's, um, I guess, got some weird influence to it. Um, I like it. I like the way it turned out. I played guitar on it and drums. And I did bass as well, but the bass is just... Uh, I just played the bass lines on guitar and then pitched it down an octave, so it's not really... Bass players might not be so into it. Let's put it that way. But yeah, it turned out cool. I I put um I put a lot into it. It was uh sort of like my life's work, honestly. I, I really um after I made that album, I pretty much felt like I had done all that I needed to do with music. It's kinda like, yeah, I I did it. I'm good to go here, but, uh, after that, you know, I kept, I kept making music, so that wasn't the be all end all. Good story. No, I really did think that though. I was kind of like, you know what? This is my thing. I'm going to, that's it. I'm done. I did it. Mm -hmm. I did my music. So, um, keep that in mind when you're listening to it. Hell yeah. And I, l- I learned how to record to m- make that album. That's why I learned how to record straight up. So That's I recorded it. Dustin Miller mix- uh, mastered it. Yeah, he buddy. didn't mix it? He didn't mix it. Like, he kind of co-mixed it, I guess you could say. Because I, I sent him, like, the stems, you know? Like, not, like, everything individual, but I sent him, like, drums, bass, guitar. like yeah. So he could mix those a little bit. Uh, okay. So it was sort of a co-mix. I don't know what it says in the insert. I might have gave him a co-mixing credit. We don't have a CD. No, we should get one. You should order us. Twelve one. bucks. We could order one right here. I wish it was on vinyl, and then I would get it. Zagate Vox. I, ha- we I do have, have it on vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, but that was. Yeah, I, want, I want like. Do you collaborate with others for your visuals? And what has the process been like? If so, yeah, we do. Um, the process has always been good. I try to hunt out visuals, meaning like t-shirt designs i think it's like i i don't know i'm just referring uh in general to our t-shirts our photos our music videos our album covers we took our last photo ourselves yeah we did that ourselves we'll probably shoot some of our uh next music videos ourselves but i would like to work with michelle and marshall who shot we have a like a black and white photo of us up that looks uh, that's really cool that michelle and marshall took uh, yeah, we work with people. We Definitely. do, but a, a couple of different graphic artists. Y- yeah, but we like say. I keep the same list of people. I I handle all of that stuff for the most part, and I keep the same list of people around. Granted, someone new is doing our album this time around, but uh, the last couple of albums, the same person did. Uh, yeah. So the process has been like um. I hit people up for our visuals and I tell them I like their work. Generally, it's people that I've seen through uh, other things they've done. And I I don't know. The process has just been like I give people a description of what we want and they make it. And I tell them what to change or that it's okay. And and we we use it it and we pay for it. To be able to do our own artwork at some point, but... You know, we're not really. I don't think we'll ever end up doing all of our own art, yeah, but we, I would like we can to do, do our own. Things here I would like to do our own. Um, I don't know. Naveen and I both like we know a lot about cinematography, photography. We've learned a lot about it. Uh, I think that we'll do. Artistically, I have a lot of things in mind for our next music videos, so I want them to be executed, and whether it's us that need to do it or someone else. I don't know, but we we do have a hand in all of these things. Naveen does all of our light design live. That's right. If you've seen so, any live videos or us live, that was your boy. Yeah, literally sitting and slaving for hours over yeah. that. MIDI programming lights. Yeah, so. which you'll have to do again for our next set. You know, so we Love always it. have a hand in everything. Um, we we let uh, stuff in our band, especially now, isn't like left up, isn't vague. When it's told to the artist, we we have ideas in mind. 
Totally. Well, Cheney, what do you think? Take a couple more, or what do you want to do? You want to end this thing? Take more. All right, Jason Sukoff is saying, oh, I was skip- skipping do you that think question. they'll ever oh, legalize so, so eggs dumb. again? Such a dumb question. I don't know what that means. Skip it. Do you know what that means? That's why I skipped it. Oh, it's funny. I don't think it's funny. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, now it's funny now because we're fighting over it, whether it's funny or not. I just thought, I, just I don't know. It's the question. a random funny uh, question. It's dumb. Love you, Jason. But. Okay, Cody Polston. Will you guys listen to my band's new song? Yeah, send it to us. We will. We will listen to it. That's all. We don't know who, where his song <laughs> yeah. where it can be heard. Thanks. Send it. But uh Oh, shout out to Kchez. This guy submitted you to a a drum reaction channel. The the yeah. jazz guy I've been telling you about. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but that's cool. It was cool his um reaction to it i think that people may have misunderstood what we were talking about with the noop and think that we like hate hate reaction videos no it's just perplexing it's just interesting that they've become such a point of interest i think that that was really what we were getting at it's cool when people do reaction videos (laughs) especially of our band Um, yeah, you I'm know, not going to watch care. I'm not going to watch a reaction video. I don't watch reaction videos. I like the original video, but I think it's cool because yeah. I do. Re- I, I mean, I just think it's cool when people submit us. And if I get one of us, then I'm like, wow, this is cool. So basically we just like it. If I don't seek them out. If anybody is paying attention to us in any way at all. Then well, we here's the cool. thing. I don't watch reaction videos if it's someone else's band because I don't seek out. I don't watch them if they're but my But what I will mind. say is that when there are, yeah, I I watched that one. I'm sure there are more. But when there are reaction videos for our band, people will send them to me. So inevitably, I just see one and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But I don't live or die by the reaction. I, no. I, it's just not my thing. I think I missed it. I'm a little too old. I like. Damn, old I like here. to watch videos of Fleetwood Mac live. I don't watch reaction videos. You know, okay, I, 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 I'm just saying I I don't watch reaction videos because I have my own reaction. I don't necessarily need to see someone else's reaction of mu- music. Okay, Cheney, I got a good Here's one time when you. I have watched a reaction video was only when it was attached to a bunch of secrets hidden in WandaVision. I, I had to watch through the reaction part. There you go. I don't know. I don't watch that show, nor do I watch reaction videos. Yeah, Naveen is not show. interested in the MCU. But Jenny, I check this out. I got, I got you right here. Oh, this is, what? Whoa, whoa, this is spicy. What? Ready for it, Jenny? Yeah. If you could delete, this is Tom Anderson. Oh, now you're skipping around. Yeah, Naveen. skip around. Why not oh skip around God. a little? We're not going to get to all these questions. <laughs> okay. It's going to take fucking three hours. All right, go. Tom Anderson wants to know. If you could delete... I don't think his name is Anderson. It's Alderson. It's Anderson. Oh, I, it, it was spelled... The fucking spell check. It's Alderson. Tom Alderson. Okay, well, I... Sorry I didn't catch that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could delete one to three classic rock bands from history, who would it be and why would it be the Beatles? Oh! The Beatles were like... Cheney like, loves the Beatles, by the way. They were like my number one listen to artist two years ago on Spotify. Who was your number one listen to artist last year? I think it might have been Erica Badu. Yeah. But the year before it was the Beatles. But I, I was listening to the Beatles radio today. Why would I erase the fucking Beatles? They're the reason that a lot of bands exist. There are so many bands who have had their Beatles, period. Ugh. <sighs> Tom, Tom, you're, you're a good guy. He's but throwing some, come throwing, on. shooting some missiles over here. I mean, I don't care what bands you like. I just, I, I enjoy the Beatles. Um, I, I wouldn't deleting bands. See, that's like that would have a butterfly effect. See, that's my thing. I don't, I don't I, if I don't, I wouldn't go back and fuck around with stuff. Nothing should change. I might not be born. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, well, you know, if you go back and delete the Eagles, then you might not be born. We don't know what kind of exactly. transactions are happening as a yeah. result. Yeah, so I'm not so gonna go delete anything. I'm afraid of the butterfly. I don't like effect. tinkering with the, the past. inner workings let, of let reality. It be. Yeah, I'm not deleting shit. Every band can exist, even ACDC. Yeah, I'm not that into ACDC. I could honestly do without ACDC. Does that mean that I need their whole career to be deleted? No. They made a lot of people 
really happy. That's true. The Beatles? How? Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. Jenny, keep going on, the, on this. Song. I'm, I mean, I just think that if you... If you're saying the Beatles should be deleted from history, then I think that you're actually not really looking into that very far. There are so many musicians. Mike Portnoy, do you like Dream Theater? Then you probably shouldn't want the Beatles to be erased from history. There you go, dude. Anyway. <coughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, I anyway. honestly, for up until recently, I would have sided with my Tom. boy Tom Anderson. His name's Alderson. Al- Alderson. Because I didn't like the Beatles either. But there's there's a range to that music. You know, you're know, you thinking of just maybe the the hits. Probably. But there's a lot more to it than that. See, I've been making him listening, listen to the Beatles. Well, that Mike Portnoy thing, it was him and whatever, like some other people. Oh, it was Paul it's Gilbert. Mike Portnoy, Paul Gilbert, Neil Morse. Um, who the fuck else? I'm blanking. On who else it was, but it's the Beatles uh, cover band. Here, I'm going to look it up. Mike Portnoy. But it's a Beatles thing that Beatles. I really like, personally. It's a Beatles cover band. It's called uh, Yellow... Yellow Portnoy M- Matter. Yellow cu- Matter Custard. Mike P- Yellow Matter Custard. Yeah, okay, that's it. And that's uh, Neil Morse, Paul Gilbert, Matt Bisonette. Oh, yeah. Kasim Sultan. I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a good time. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Yeah, so I like that. Something that Chaney and I do is we watch YouTube concerts. We do. We're huge fans. Instead of Netflix and chill, we're concert and chill. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do tonight. You better fucking believe it. Because that shit is fucking fun. Yeah. And then it keeps you in the zone. You know? You're in the zone because you're still watching music. Right. I really like it. I'm a a fan. Last night we watched some... Hiatus Coyote. That was confusing. Nav- Very confusing. Hates, Naveen hates I wouldn't say I hate coyote. it. I would say her... She was wearing like medieval armor yeah. as her hair, which was a little distracting. Well, one thing about that band is that they're almost, to me, as compliment, complimented... Complimented. <laughs> as complicated as a technical death metal band in some ways. Like, it's as hard to follow. It's really complex. Yeah. So I was kind of a little bit... I've heard them before, but this particular song was uh, I l- confusing. I like Hiatus lie. Coyote a lot. There are some cuts I could do without. But overall, I really like them. And we're going to a, a tropical place in a few weeks. And I'll, I think I'll be like sipping on a margarita listening to Hiatus Coyote That's on right. the beach. That's right. We are going to Florida. Yeah. I actually wanted to talk about that. Yeah. Because we met the coolest guy in Florida. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we did. We will be in Florida at <laughs> the end of April. Oh, you're saying because before I'm saying maybe if anybody's yeah, in if, Florida, if they want to chill. Florida, you hit us up. You know, dude. we'll be we'll wear masks and everything. Yeah, just we'll if you want to hang out in or, Florida. Yeah. So we will be in South Florida um, on some family April. stuff. End of April. We're there on some family shit. Family shit. Hanging out with the family. Shit. I have family that lives in Florida. But as every anyway, we as w- every Jewish descendant of New York Jewish that's people right. does. That's right. Do. But one year, I think that might was that the last time we went to Florida? Oh no, we haven't been there for like two years. Three years. No, I'm saying the last time no, was that when wasn't we met it. Nicholas. That wasn't it, no. That was not the We've last been time. there playing shows since. No, I know, but I'm saying just went for fun. Like no. went to visit family. No, we've been since. Yeah, we didn't know. There was another you time. Sure about that? Yes. There was another time when we didn't get that plastered so we went to we went um to miami right one night. so we rented a car or something on or borrowed my grandma's car or something I don't know. anyway we <laughs> went. really getting down to the nitty gritty <laughs> we got this. in a car first we no, no, went no, no. and we asked we did not do that we took an uber to fucking miami no we yes didn't. we did how much did it cost okay maybe, maybe we didn't we did not do yeah that. no we didn't because no, we, we drove took back. michelle's yeah, car yeah yeah, yeah. Just throwing her name out there. We took Michelle's <laughs> car. So what, dude? What are they going to stalk her on the internet? Who cares? She doesn't have the same last name as me. True. Um, so we took... <laughs> to all two people who have made it this far. Yeah. Through all of our rambling. So we went to Miami. Jason, Jason Sukoff might be mad at me about the eggs question. that I said it was dumb. 
What was so dumb about it? Is I'm it like, sorry. I really dismissed that really quickly. It says, do you think you know they'll what? ever legalize eggs again? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's like some weird thing that he's saying. <laughs> he's, if we had the ability to call people, we, we could call him. Uh, which is something we should figure out. Do we have the ability? Do you want me to try real quick? Yeah, call right, him. Let's see if this works. Just say, hey, you're on the podcast. What's up with the egg prob- question? Okay, here, I'm going to do it real quick. We're not going to edit out this de- this dead space, Cheney. No, of course not. Uh-oh. That's what it's all about. The King Howard Stern <coughs> created dead space on the... Oh, yeah. Cheney has been listening to every Howard Stern episode of all that's time. ever happened. He's the king. I'm thinking of trying to FaceTime him. Let me see if this will work. He loves FaceTime. Uh, I won't see, see I him. Find my fa- no, I, I won't see him. And I'm just going to FaceTime and him. just it'll just be a call. Just hang up on him. Let me see here. Tom, let's <coughs> hang out if we go to Pittsburgh. I'm Philly, not signed man. in. This is, oh, God. Yeah, it's just this a, whole a whole big thing. Anyway, thing. maybe on the next. So Tom asked about what regional specific chains we look forward to eating at, and he brought up Blackbird. Blackbird is like our <coughs> favorite place. Are they a regional chain? Yeah, dude. There's there more are than a one? couple. Yeah, we've been to the other one. Okay, well, I'm going with my man. Uh, I'm blanking right now. but There's this really good chain that's like a Mediterranean food chain in Denver. Yeah. I look forward to that. We don't know what it's called. But I don't know what it's called, and I don't know if I'll ever find it again. All right, I'm going with my boy Joey Diaz. Oh. With uh, fucking... Uh, uh, what the fuck is it called? Fuck. Texas. Texas. Tex-Mex food. Yeah, what um, is it called? Chewies? Chevy's. Chewies. Chewies. Chewies, dude. Dude. Chewies, Chewies. is hell of the bomb. That's the bomb. I'm still trying to sign into FaceTime, by the well, way. Well, you don't need call. to. It's over. It's over. Forget about the it. The moment's passed. The moment has passed. Where? Well, As van <coughs> tours, tours, how well, if at all, do you sleep in a van while moving? Well, when you're sleep deprived, you learn to sleep in the while the van's moving. Eventually, you will go to sleep. All yeah. right, I'm Cheney, I am in on my right. FaceTime. Should we call? Personally, it? for me, it's kind of hard for me to f- like. I on tour fall asleep really huh, late. It works. Can you hear that? Yeah, it's. I hear it. I fall asleep really late on tour, like in the morning. So I sleep during the day, kind of. Trying to give him this a shot here. Yo. There he is. Hey, you're on the podcast. Is that cool? Uh, dude, that's so cool. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's about where I just was. Uh, dude. Your, your <laughs> face isn't on it. It's just the audio. All right, dude. Well, I was just in a terrific place. I was having this dream. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I, dude, and I had a dream that you were my legs, and like both of you, and like one of you were like, "Yo, I don't want to be part of you anymore," and I was like, I, "Did you actually uh, have this dream, or, or like, no? Okay. I don't know. That would have been really funny if you did. <laughs> Why do you have no. to? So, Jason, what is this? Why are eggs illegal? Eggs are they illegal now? They made them illegal again? Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Why? I don't know why they're why illegal. Why are they illegal in the first place? Stop it. <laughs> End egg illegalization. All right, dude, Jason, can we call you on like a regular basis just to yeah. check in here and there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's very scary out there yeah. for all of yeah, us. We need- yeah, we Yeah. Because we're, we've been listening to like a lot of Howard Stern and... Uh, which your boy, your boy frequent. Richard Christie comes. He's on there all the time. Uh, yeah, he is. That's his job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's been there for like uh, yeah forever, forever, dude. I've been l- watching it's like two thousand one or some shit. I've well, been watching a shitload of episodes from the early two thousands, and he's like all over that shit. Whoa! Well, I remember you telling me that he lived with you when he got like. On the Howard Stern show or whatever. Yeah, he uh, he definitely uh, called in there like all the time and like sent in like like fake songs. He was like the ultimate fan. He, if anyone deserved to be on the show, it's him. That's amazing. <clears throat> well, he, he won Stuttering John's job. Whoa, that's how he got on. He won Stuttering John's job. There was a there was a contest and they ran the contest. I feel like it was for like a. 
like I'm, I don't know how long it was, but whatever I say, it's going to be wrong. So let's just say there was a contest. Let's just say it went, went on for two months. And there was like probably three or four different people. And at the end, everyone voted. And Richard was the guy. Damn. Oh, shit. That's I think the other crazy. day I watched him like got it. He got his taint licked by some guest on the show. Oh, was it Sal? I don't know. I don't been, I can't remember, dude. I've been like watching so many Howard Stern's. They're all Sal the stock. I, Sal the stockbroker is a. He's cool too. I know that dude. He's he's funny. Oh, wow. I know Richard and Sal, and then I don't know anybody else. You should be. On, you should be on the Stern show. You should have been. No, I don't want to go <laughs> up to New York. I, I used to live up there, and I've been to New York enough to know that I'm staying in Florida because, you know. Well, we were just talking about how we're going to South Florida next uh, month. You know what? The, my only problem with New York is, like, literally, is there's you can't park, and you must know there's that. No, oh, that's because, so forget true. about that. Yeah, forget about it. There are too well, many I people. Have a, I had a van, and you know, if you have a van, you can't park in New York. No, I mean we make it happen, but it's a fucking nightmare. Obviously, I feel like we were always parked in, in like a questionably illegal place to park. But we ha- we've had pretty good luck, like when we play at. Uh, What's that both my place? parents are from uh, New York. They're both Bronx. I'm yeah. the products of two Bronx Jews. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep, Holy shit. Go. What was that like growing up? Uh, you know, Jay, it's uh, you know, it's not gonna hurt. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know, dude. It was it was all right. That's you know, cool. that's what's up. Yeah, that's dude. cool. I love. New York's cool. It's cool living close to New York, so you can like go once in a while. But like, right? I wouldn't want to live there. It's too expensive. But yeah, tons of friends in New York. New yeah. York's sick, dude. Yeah, New York is it. sick, but it's like the winter and it's too crowded for me. I don't want to live in that. I, I'm not a city. I'm fucking good on that. Huh? You want to move to Connecticut? All of us? We could. We yeah. Could go broke in like the, a week. The yeah. thing is, that, I mean, I don't. You probably don't realize it, but you're probably like. You're you're done with that type of weather, straight up. Of course, I. You've am. been living in fucking Florida for twenty years, dude. Come on. That's why I moved down here. Fuck, fuck snow. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Straight snow up, snow's ridiculous, like, dude. Snow. And people who like playing with snowboards and, and skis. <laughs> and yeah, I know crippled people can go skiing. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I you don't. Sk- I don't fucking do any of that type of stuff. No, I am no, not thanks. skiing. I tried one time on like a bunny hill, and I totally just ate shit. I can't do it. I'm I'm not coordinated enough to ski. No, I'm not doing any of that, dude. Straight up, fuck all that. One time, I one time my dad tried to ride a motorcycle and he flew right off of it, and the motorcycle hit a tree or something. Yeah, I rode a motorcycle oh, one time. It was pretty scary, man. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, shit was horrifying. Well, you had your motorcycle parked in our driveway, and I tried to get on top of it, and just getting on top of it, it fell over on yeah, me. Yeah, just laid it out. Straight up. So, yeah. You see what I got on the TV here? Yeah, what are you watching? Oh, Seinfeld. Oh, there we go. All right, dude. It <laughs> has to be on at all times. Just to, <laughs> just to calm just, you down. It, it helps just you, like, down. remember your parents. <clears throat> well, damn, dude. Uh, I will never forget my parents because they're <laughs> my parents. <laughs> I've been grounded for, like, 32 years. You're grounded still? Jay. I'm still, yeah. You're grounded. I am great. Jay, go to your room <laughs> for three days. <laughs> you tell us what you did when you come out. <laughs> you think about it. Wait, so you grew up in New York? No, Connecticut. Oh, Connecticut. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Well, right yeah. on, dude. I just wanted to give you a buzz. Say what up. You know what I mean? I'm glad. I'm glad you did. I love you guys. All right, I we love, love you too, all man. You Everyone. All right, I'll dude. Talk to y'all. We'll talk, talk to you later, later, brother. All right, peace. Jenny, that's the way to do it, man. I know, call we need in. To start calling people. That's what we got to do. Go. You just we call, call people real now? quick. Well, I want to let's do it, but let's not do it an hour and a half into the show because it's like oh, no, yeah. no one's going to see no this. Point. But I think let's end the episode. All right, we're going to end it. We had a little guest call. It was funny. It was nice. We had a lot of laughs. We got to talk about barrel of laughs. A lot of good times. Certain show. He didn't tell us whether or not eggs are illegal but he didn't even have any fucking idea what we were talking about he's like oh they made him illegal, illegal again he asked the question i think we're gonna have to have J- jason on speed i know dial he's like just to kind of just talk to him 
Anyway, uh, really good time. Um, Have a good one. Pick up a t-shirt. Well, uh, yeah, pick up the t-shirts. Thank you guys for che- for checking in with us. You guys keep us going, and I actually mean that because we quit and we came back because of you guys. That's right. We'll see you next week, motherfucker. Have a good week. <laughs>